Well, well, welcome everybody. All right, very glad to be here. I think this is ah, Moodle Moot since 2010 or somewhere around there. So uh, let's get started. First thing, let me just have a show of hands. Who here has used Big Blue Button before? All right. So I am going to share with you my thoughts on the future of virtual classrooms. Now I put three things in here, pedagogy, AI, and analytics. I only bolded two of them. So most of this is gonna be on pedagogy and analytics, and I think AI has a role, but I will touch base on it. So what I really wanna do is share with you where I think the future is going and how we can help you get there and make the best possible experience for your students. All right, so I do wear two hats. I am the co-founder of Big Blue Button, 2007, and I also am the co-founder of Blindside Networks. Blindside Networks is the commercial company behind the Big Blue Button project. I think it's really important, as you know, with Moodle, there are commercial companies that support it. Um, and we, as Blindside Networks, enable organizations worldwide to provide world-class online classes. Uh, we've done over two billion minutes so far, this in the last four years since COVID, uh, virtual classes. And we work with 29 Moodle partners who resell our commercial hosting worldwide. So Moodle is near and dear to our heart. It is the deepest integration of any LMS. I believe our ethos of making the world a better place for education is shared. Uh, we share Moodle's ethos in that regard as well. Okay, so what is Big Blue Button? If you walk up to me in a hallway or on the stage, um, what would I say? First thing I would say, it's not a video conferencing system. Um, it's not Teams or Zoom or Google Meets. But what we say is like, friends don't let friends use Teams to teach classes online. <laughs> so, but for kind of a concise statement, we would say Big Blue Button is a virtual classroom designed to ensure every student learns. And what that means is in a video conferencing class, you can get lost. You know, the student doesn't share their webcams. Maybe they're there, maybe they're not. The teacher's teaching the screen. Students are just passive. So, but what is this design part? So again, we built it so that Big Blue Button has built-in tools for active learning and live analytics. And it's through that that the teacher is gonna be aware of the students to ensure every student learns. And I'm gonna show you how we do this and how it's based on pedagogy. We have lots of customers that use Big Blue Button. So I actually looked through some of our lists. There were three of them here. Uh, Ana Mendez signed up about two weeks ago. They're a fully online university in Puerto Rico. And they, are, they used us from like a small amount and now they're like really high. Um, the reason is their VP of Provost just sent an email out to everyone in the university and said, stop using Teams and Zoom. We're only gonna use Big Blue Button. Uh, UNESCO here in the Caribbean, a national university, uh, university, they've been with us for many years. They're also in Puerto Rico. Uh, they do a lot of online. And maybe a few names below that you might recognize, including the country of France. All right, two quotes for you. So what are customers saying about us? Well, this one in particular, Minerva Virtual Academy, they're an online UK school, fully online, K-12, um, and they view us as their partner to create world-class online learning environment for their students. Like the learning outcomes, right? It's really important that they have the best possible platform. And this one I like, it's another UK organization. They found that when using Big Blue Button, they were able to achieve a full grade point higher than the equivalent in-person classes. Now the way they did that is how they approached the teaching and learning online. Same thing with Minerva, and I'll share with you a bit. Okay, so you might just ask me, what is an effective virtual class? Like when I say that, well, you would probably hear it phrased as increased learning outcomes. Students use Moodle because the structure provides a framework for them to learn online, similar with Big Blue Button. But how do you get to increase learning outcomes? Okay, well, if you use a video conferencing system, the answer is clear, it's just more video, right? Did anybody remember like during COVID, you know, the, all the vendors were saying like, we gotta get 49 webcams and then we'll be great. Sure, 49 students, great. What am I gonna do with that? Would I have to teach lecture? And that didn't work out so well. So that's the stats from the uh, National Association, or National Center for Educational Statistics. That's the reading the mass course, and you can see what happened after COVID. That's the result of using video conferencing system to teach students online. Okay, so I'm now gonna do the interactive part. So increasing learning outcomes suggest, okay, you wanna help students learn. 
What is effective learning? Well, there's a really great book, Make It Stick. Has anybody here read this book? Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a question from it. Which, three study, which of these study techniques is most effective for learning? A, underlying, B, highlighting, C, rereading, or D, none of the above? Who thinks, just shout out what you think the answer is. D, correct, right? It's passive. Your frontal part of the brain is doing stuff, but it's not moving back to the back part where you can recall it. Okay, so the main point is active learning is way better than passive learning. Video conferencing systems are mostly passive. You need to get students doing things. If you're gonna go into the gym to work out, you need to lift the weights. You can't just look at the weights. Okay. So let's take another example of why active learning is so important. Okay, there's this great study that was done at Harvard. Second year physics students, they had two instructors. On week 10, they split them into two groups. One group was given a lecture on the whiteboard and the other group was given a short introduction and had to do the same problems. Same teachers, same content, same students, and then after a week they randomized, the, they flipped out the groups. So at the end of the two weeks, they asked the students, through which form of teaching did you feel you learned most effectively? So how many people thought the students said they learned most effectively watching the teacher? Okay, how many students, how many thought the students learned most effective, they felt they learned most effective doing the problems? Okay, would you be surprised to hear that you're all wrong? Okay, can anybody tell me why students thought they learned better watching than doing? Anyone? So the reason is that when your students are actually sat down and try to do the problems, they're like, ah, oh, it was so easy, but I'm, I'm stupid. I'm, I'm not getting this. It's struggling with this and so on, right? So they felt this struggle, which is the workout, right? The real learning occurs. But when they watched the teacher do it, it was just poetry in motion, right? Harvard, world class. So they left the class thinking, that was great. I, I learned that. But now they did a second follow-on test. Which group actually scored higher in doing the problems? Was it the group that watched the lecture? Anybody? No, or was it the group that actually did the problems? Yes, so this also points out another challenge of online learning. Students will want to just watch, thinking that they're learning more, but they're not really, right? Again, it's watching the weights, you're not actually doing the work. Learning takes mental effort, and there's a lot of joy in that, but it still takes the mental effort. Okay, so can anybody, we're gonna switch over to pedagogy now. Can anybody tell me what this is, uh, what pedagogic framework this is? Bloom, yes, okay, I like to draw it like this because it looks like a staircase. Why, because you have to climb it. But what's really interesting is this middle part is kind of like the activity. You know, you remember something, you understand it, then you apply, you evaluate, you assess. What is Bloom saying? You gotta do something with the knowledge for it to stick in before you can master it and be creative about it. That's Bloom's staircase. Okay, who created this theory of pedagogy? Yes, okay, so Zavosky Zone of Proximal Development. Love the complicated name, but the concept is fairly simple. It basically says that when you wanna learn something, there's a zone where you can learn it, right? If it's too easy, you know, if I said, what's two plus two? Not gonna learn anything. If I said, what's 334 plus 456? I always wait to see if someone just yells out the answer, right? Um, the key part here though is that you can learn things on your own, but the upper end, right? The most effective, efficient learning, right? So think you're going into the gym, you could work out for an hour or you could work out for half an hour and get the most effective workout. Well, that's available with assistance that says that you will learn more learning with others. Well, that's social constructivism. That is the foundation of Moodle, right? We learn by learning with each other, by watching each other learn and helping each other and getting help ourselves, okay? So what's the goal of a virtual class? You wanna get people in that zone. You wanna get them there, and how do you get there? Well, you can provide them some scaffolding, you know, engage them in activities, active learning, you know, monitor their progress and give them feedback in the moment. So like if they're just trying to lift that weight and they can't quite lift it, you kinda give them a little bit of help and they get it there. Same thing with the student. The students wanna have the freedom to make mistakes and struggle knowing that the teacher's there to help them. It's not a passive class. Okay, so let's map this into what a class would actually look like. It would follow something like this. The first part is you would do something to build relationships. 
Why? Because distance learning is hard. You're kind of like looking through the keyhole. I mean, there's a teacher there, the student's there. So you want to be overt. You want to build relationships so that students feel comfortable to make mistakes, right? That's, the go that's going against the Harvard study, right? You tell them up front, this is going to be active. You're going to struggle and the struggle is good. Don't worry, it directly maps. The more you struggle, the more you learn and I'm here to help. You would do a little review, preview, you do the main class and you do a little review, review it, recall at the end, and then you go on to next. So learning theory says active learning, active recall, space repetition. Those are the foundations to learning. Okay, so in the middle part, you would do some scaffolding. That's what Zavosky would say, so that you can then get them to do activities, which are near the upper end, ideally, right? But different students, you know, in the class. And then you do some active learning. And in the end, you do active recall. So now I'm gonna give you an AI question based on what I just said. Imagine you're in the class, 60 minutes, and you knew at the last five minutes, a button would appear that would summarize the class for you. Would this help learning? Okay, how many people think it wouldn't help learning? Okay, how many people think it would help learning? Why did you say that? You are the, I think you, one person said that that's not the best way to help. Can anybody tell me why that was not the best way to help learning? By having it automatically summarized for the students? Anyone? It's passive, right? So I'm, if I knew I could sit there for 55 minutes and at the end a button would summarize it for me, why would I pay attention? A much better way of using AI is you first have the students summarize and then imagine there's 20 students in the class and everyone gives like two key points. The AI could help organize those key points for this instructor and the instructor would give them back the key points in their own words, but only after they recall it, right? That's a way more effective way of learning. So AI is an assistive role, but it's not replacing it. Okay, so now let's gear it up into where Big Blue Button comes in. This is what actually is going on that you want. You want to have what we call this virtuous cycle of active learning. You want the students to realize the more I apply myself, the faster I learn, right? The more exercise I do in the gym, the faster my weights, my, my muscles grow, the more I use my brain, okay? So how does this map into? Well, now and only now do we talk about features of Big Blue Button. It has these tools for built-in active learning, breakout rooms, whiteboard, polling, shared notes, reactions. You can come by our booth and I'll show you all of them, right? So you don't have to go to third-party products. Well, I hear many people say, I use Teams and I use Cahoots and I use Nearpod and I use this other thing. Well, it's because the platform you're using has no idea what you're trying to do. It's just sharing bits on the screen. So with Big Blue Button, these built-in tools, some of them have analytics that get generated and then those analytics are, vi are made visible to the teacher live during the session so that they can see which students are struggling. And the way we think of this is there's no back of the classroom in Big Blue Button. Like you're not dependent on webcams. Students cannot be invisible. Okay, so now I'm gonna just give you a couple of visuals of things that we do to kind of give you a sense of what it is. So that's what the whiteboard is. We built on the top of a super good whiteboard called TL Draw. It's embedded in the core of Big Blue Button. It's multi-user. So you can get students to move their most around, interact with them as well. Uh, for teaching, you're gonna need to sometimes lock things down. So here you can lock the specific things down in Big Blue Button, the chat, the shared notes, and all of these are based on requirements we got from teachers. Reactions, you can do reactions in Big Blue Button. Emojis, emotion, emotional intelligence. We make it fun. There's little animations that go on as well if you spam the emoji. We do it in our team meetings internally. Shared notes, so there's a collaborative notepad in Big Blue Button that was really good for breakout rooms as well. But again, you can get students, you could ask them questions like keep, keep track of the key points during the class. Breakout rooms, we put a lot of work into breakout rooms. It is one of the key ways to get students to learn. Why? Because it's social constructivism, you know, workshops. Uh, so you, we did some things in Big Blue Button where if you put students in breakout rooms, you can have Big Blue Button automatically return back the shared notes and automatically return back the whiteboard. So the students go into the breakout room with a purpose to solve some problem, and then the content can come back to the main room where you can get them to present, and they know that. Um, another feature we added recently that was funded by one of our customers was for the breakout rooms, could I assign individual presentations so that each breakout room could have a different activity? They paid for it, we built it, you all benefit from it. It, it, Big Blue Button is open source, by the way. 
So everyone gets a free copy of Big Blue Button just for coming to this presentation. <laughs> See, this, it just gives. Okay, and monitoring breakout rooms is a possible as well. You can actually open them all up in individual tabs and just flip back and forth between them. Uh, you can even listen to all four of them, if you, all of them if you want. But again, this idea that the teacher is visible into the students to try to help them who are struggling in the moment. Polling, we have built-in polling and we give you the live results as well. And now we're gonna do something interesting. We observed over the years that when instructors uploaded slides, they would have questions in the slides that they would sort of like type into a poll question. And if you ever use Teams for polling, you have to use Microsoft Forms to do it, right? That's a loss of instructional time. You don't want that. You wanna just go and get students to apply themselves over and over and use that to give you analytics and feedback. So what we did was when you upload slides to Big Blue Button, we read the text already into memory for screen readers or WCAG 2.1 AA accessible. But we also, when we read the text, we kind of say like, this looks like a poll question. Like there's a question at the top, an ABCD. And there's nothing special about that slide. It's just a PowerPoint slide. But it's enough that we can pick it out that says you probably want to ask a poll question. So what we'll do is we'll put a button on your slide as the instructor. The button is blue, by the way, which seems appropriate. And you click it and it says, hey, are you wanting to do like a five choice poll? It will create the poll question. It will display it to students. You just do one click. And now as you do the polls, the learning analytics dashboard, that's the dashboard that's kind of keeping track of students' attendance and activities and the poll results starts to really kick in. So imagine you're halfway through the presentation. You've done a couple polls. You've got 25 students in the class and you're kind of wanting to see how they, where are they at. Well, you flip off the learning analytics dashboard and you see one of the students, Sam, hasn't actually responded to all the polls. So imagine if you said in the class, hey Sam, don't worry if you make mistakes, like it's important that you respond to the polls, this is how you learn. Well, Sam would be there going like, what? How is it possible the teacher's aware of me? I'm not doing anything. I'm not sharing my webcam. Well, in Big Blue Button, we don't rely on webcams. The analytics will guide the instructor and that's the difference between us and a video conferencing system. Okay, we are built into the core of Moodle. We, are, we got embedded in the core in 2020. We've been working on the Moodle integration since 2010. We are proud to be there. It is by far the deepest integration of any LMS and we fully put a lot of effort into it to exploit it to your benefit. So I'll share with you some of the things and this is now like things that we've been working on that last year I talked about as the future but now we have it. Okay, so in the core, you can do it. Um, just add Big Blue Button as an activity. And what we like to say, it looks like part of Moodle because it is part of Moodle. So we may take advantage of every capability an activity has and a few more that I'll show you in a moment. So one nice thing we have is activity completion. So when a session is done in Big Blue Button, the data goes back into Moodle and Moodle says, hey, did you want this to be completed? And here you can say, I want Moodle, can you mark this activity, this class, as completed when a student has been in there for more than 90 minutes? And I didn't check it, but let's say they responded to polls. Moodle will automatically mark that because at the end of every session in Big Blue Button, we're sending this data back. And we have guest access that got built in. This was in our previous version of Moodle. And when the recordings occur, they occur right inside of Moodle. So there's some controls there where you as the instructor can show hide a recording, delete a recording. The key point is students are not loading external software. Big Blue Button runs in the browser. They're not going to external logins. They've already authenticated with Moodle. You as the instructor are not managing in some other interface. It goes right inside of Moodle. Again, it looks like part of Moodle because it is part of Moodle. So Moodle 4.5 was actually a big release for us and it was released for this point. We have two pieces here. There's Moodle 4.5 and there's a newer version of Big Blue Button that we're just finishing up. We'll show you in there if you come by our booth. But Moodle 4.5, we really started to mature the concept of sub plugins. Does anybody here know what a sub plugin is? Okay, so some parts of Moodle allow you to extend it without changing the core of the plugin, but adding like a sub plugin. Think of it as a plugin for a plugin. But what it means is that 
in Big Blue Button, we extended the integration so you could kind of hook into various places and then you could just put a sub plug in there that could add some extra functionality. And as you go to Moodle 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, that plugin will just work. That's our promise to you. And the, I'll give you some examples of what we we're finally able to do with Moodle that we wanted to do for years. So this is what the interface looks like for the, those admins out there. You can manage the sub plugins and I have examples of all of these. They're not modifying the core anymore. The core has given us enough framework through sub plugins that we can extend it. And we being Blindside Networks, or when we work with our Moodle partners, they can extend it for you, the integration. And we also built sub plugins into Big Blue Button as well. So now our plugins, we can now extend the Big Blue Button interface without modifying the core. We have wanted to do this for years and we've worked on this for over a year. So these two things are gonna come together for you. Here's an example of a plugin, a, a sub plugin actually in Moodle that has the activity send emails out when students um, are like an hour away from the session. This one was paid for by the French Ministry of Education. So you can now have the Moodle plugin for Big Blue Button automatically notify users. So let's take this example of what actually goes on. You have Moodle where students come to, they go to Big Blue Button, and then they go back to Moodle. And you have kind of the live class that goes on in the middle. And then these two arrows are what we are able to achieve now. Data going from Moodle into Big Blue Button for the purpose of helping the instructor have a more effective class and data going back. So let's take an example of the data going in. So we now have the ability, when Big Blue Button starts up, it can call back to Moodle and say, can you give me the attendance for this course, for the, the roster for this course? And through a plugin in Big Blue Button, we can show the instructor who is present in the class. So you don't have to take attendance anymore. The, the information is all there in Moodle. We now brought it into Big Blue Button and made it easy for you to see. And so you would e easily see who has um, attended the class and who's currently present. Both of these back end and front ends are now with plugins. No more source, no more change to the core. And this is an example of what we can do. And ourselves or through the Moodle partners, we can do more examples if you have data you want to surface. Uh, that's what it looks like now. So we created a sub plugin to say, hey, I would like to pick assignments and you tell me inside of Big Blue Button if any students are missing those assignments because I can use that information as a teacher to how can I say like, you know, to encourage students, to, you know, berate students, to challenge students, you know, like the human part of it, right? That's so important for teaching and learning. Another thing, so Moodle knows things about your students that would also be helpful. Like have they passed in the last, you know, two assignments or that. And this is a, an example of the data that we can send in. And it might be other things like, this is the first time the student was in my class. In Moodle Workplace, have they done the course completion for the previous course? So. Think of this now as a framework that we can build out the sharing of information that's gonna help you have your teachers have the best experience. Um, and some fun things too, like if it's K-12, can we say, imagine we store in the number of stars that you've given to students, and maybe you give them a star, a gold star, like, hey, that was really good, right? It doesn't have to be, hey, this student's struggling, this student's like really rewarding. And we, through a plugin in Big Blue Button, we provide some animations, you know? Reports, so another thing we can do, this is going from Big Blue Button back to Moodle. Instead of just doing activity completion, all that rich data that we had in the Learning Analytics dashboard is now available inside of Moodle. What's the benefit? We can create reports for it. One of the first things we did was say, let's create an attendance report. I don't know, I've lost track of how many customers say, could you just show me if the student was there? Maybe you're a commercial company and your government provides funding for, um, um, for uh, professional development. And you don't have to create these reports manually anymore. But the point is we send back all the data and it's now available inside of Moodle where we could write sub plugins to do things with those data. And we Blindsight Networks have also created what we call like an enterprise learning analytics dashboard that for our customers and with Moodle partners, we can give the, uh, you visibility across all your classes so you can see trends in terms of activity. Again, the thinking here is the teachers have data live to make better decisions on how to teach students. And here the administrators have data to see how can I improve the overall classes? And of course to improve it, you have to be able to measure. And we wanna give you those measurements. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little more interactive. Can anybody fill in the blank? 
Blank learning is far more effective than passive learning. Active learning, okay, a little harder one. Okay, Big Blue Button is a virtual classroom built with built-in tools for blank and blank to ensure every student learns. Built-in tools for, first one, think of it, do that active recall, built-in tools for active learning, and what was the other one? Live analytics, exactly. Okay, one more thing. H5P, who uses H5P here? Okay, so we took this plugin system that we built on Big Blue Button, and I challenged our developers, can you embed H5P, which is an asynchronous activity, inside of Moodle, and can you bring that in live so it could be synchronous and act synchronously inside the Big Blue Button? So we have this demo at the booth. This is what it looks like. So you can have a slide that has, remember when I said that you, Big Blue Button can look at the slide and say, this looks like a poll question? So we have a process where we can create a slide that embeds enough information to say, this is H5P. And when you do it and when you activate it, your students, uh, as they go through, let's say, the crossword puzzle, you see it at a grid view with live updates. So we've been working one of the H5P developers to do this, and this is all done with a plugin in Big Blue Button. Like it really put, drove home what we're able to do. So, and that results from the H5P is viewed live, and it also goes into Learning Analytics dashboard. So if you have three polls, you can track students, and if you have three H5P activities, currently it's drag and drop and crossword, you can track those as well. So if you love H5P, you know, come to us afterwards. We wanna work with a few schools that are using H5P to build this out to make sure it builds, it gives your instructors more tool, more built-in ways for active learning and live analytics to ensure every student learns. Okay, the summary. Um, I'm really passionate about what we've been doing for 16 years, because I think the world just needs a better virtual classroom. Students need to have the best online learning possible, and educators need the best platform to do it, like Moodle plus Big Blue Button. Like Moodle, we're built upon pedagogical foundations, right? I didn't talk about features until at least halfway through the slides. You know, it's like, what is the real goal here? It's to students to learn. I believe humans learn best from humans. That empathy that you build with the instructor is way more powerful than the empathy you would build for an AI. But what can AI do? As I sort of said earlier, it can help the instructor save time, maybe generate some activities ahead of time. It could help the student active recall, but it cannot replace learning. It's like going into the gym and saying, hey, could you lift those weights for me? You know, what do you expect to have happen, right? And the teacher like, okay, like I use Duolingo, but if I miss my class, you know, I'm okay. But if I have to show up for a class and the teacher knows my name and cares about me, I'm probably gonna be more motivated to learn. And if that class is active and the teacher can actively help me because they're aware of where I'm struggling, I'm gonna be likely to more apply myself way better than just using like a video conferencing system. So this has been a huge release for us together with Moodle 4.5 and the sub plugins and in Big Blue Button 3.0, the plugins, we can do things like sharing data back and forth that are now really easy for us to do. And we can customize that for you as well. So reach out to us on Blindside Networks um, or your Moodle partner, whom we work with many of them, to explore if you'd like to see if Big Blue Button could do a better job than maybe what you're currently using, we would work together to make sure that your students have the best learning experience online. Thank you very much.